Revenge is a dish best served cold, and no one knows that better than Scar King. Hello and welcome to our Godzilla X Kong Ending Explained video. Before we break down the climax of the movie, let's take a light, distorting, gravity-defying tour of what led the Titanus Managerio Kaiju to take part in Monster vs. Edition of World War III. But first, let us get it out of the way. Godzilla X Kong The New Empire is the best monster mayhem movie out there. Four gargantuan titans setting aside their differences to tackle an ancient subterranean evil? Yes, yes, and yes. That's what Monster Burst stands for. Before we delve into the details, here goes a fair warning, the next couple of minutes are going to be riddled with spoilers. So proceed only if you don't mind them. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Kong can't stop this on his own. The ending of 2021's Godzilla vs. Kong established that Kong has found a new home in Hollow Earth, and Godzilla retreated into the ocean, presumably looking for a new lair after his previous one was destroyed by a nuclear blast. The new empire opens with visuals of how Kong is settling in in his new Hollow Earth empire, where he has to constantly scuffle with praying monsters by laying traps and also simply punching them or tearing them up in half. Case in point, the grisly warthog-like beasts who bleed a slimy green that disgusts Kong just enough to shrug it off, but not enough to stop chomping on them. Meanwhile, the lizard titan that looks like a mutated crocodile, Titanus Dog, also makes a cameo in a blink and miss scene attempting to snatch away some of Kong's hunt, and Kong being the generous titan he is, didn't really mind that. Anyhow, so we have a hollow earth filled with Titanus Dogs, warthogs, giant water serpents, the electricity discharging vertizines, a toad that mimics Kong's roars and many more beasts to keep Kong busy, but he is rather lonely, always hoping to find a family of his own. In Godzilla x Kong, his wish actually comes true but in the form of a nightmare. Kong chances upon a hollow earth energy emitting from deep within a secret cavern, which makes his axe glow a bright blue. Still discovering uncharted hollow earth territories every new day, Kong ventures into the cavern and goes across a waterfall to find himself attacked by a bunch of scarred, charred, and murderous apes. You've met Suko in the trailers, and while you may think this one is quite the adorable ape, Suko turned out to be a menace that bit Kong's finger and barred his teeth at him. Well, Kong taught him a lesser too by using Suko as a hammer to beat the hell out of his other, bigger teammates. Schooled by Kong, Suko leads the way to where this ape army came from, but not without attempting to ambush Kong in the lake inhabited by a savage snake titan. Kong being Kong not only killed the serpentine giant, but also shared its meat with Suko, an act of kindness that surprised Suko, indicating that kindness is not delivered where he is from. Meanwhile, as we all know, Godzilla loves to keep rogue titans in check and gets really pissed when something or someone threatens nature's balance. Thus, when Godzilla wakes up from its underwater slumber on the surface and heads straight for a nuclear facility in France for some hearty snacking, it means that the G-Man is gearing up for a colossal threat to something he has been able to sense long before the Titan special organization Monarch could make sense of it, and was still grappling with a bunch of signal spikes from Hollow Earth. However, it wasn't all work and no play for Godzilla, who also smashed up the multi-legged armored Titanus Scylla in Rome as a side hustle. In a strangely heartwarming scene, Godzilla then curled up inside a coliseum for a power nap before waking up and heading towards the Arctic again. An unusual choice of destination, one would say, but that's where resides Tiamat, a gigantic sea dragon with its body covered in scales that can cut through the G-Man. This creature made her debut in the 2021 graphic novel Godzilla Dominion and is established to be as territorial as fierce. In the novel, Tiamat had claimed one of Godzilla's old lairs, but in the movie, Godzilla required to absorb Tiamat's energy by resting within its hideout to power up for a seemingly world-ending threat. In a visually striking battle, Godzilla's powerful atomic breath slashes Tiamat in pieces, giving him an abundant supply of Tiamat's pink energy. Godzilla now charged up twice, once with blue nuclear energy and then with Tiamat's pink upgrade, transforms into a burning form that emits embers from his eyes and causes the ocean to gurgle with heat. This Godzilla upgrade is clearly homage to the Showa era, and we're here for it. Now this brings us back to Kong, and last we met him, he was following Suko, who took him into a treacherous hollow earth cavern filled 
with lava waterfalls and disgruntled tortured Kongs who answer to a malevolent king on a stone throne. Say hello to Scar King, fellas, a gigantic, athletic, red-furred ape monster who torments his minions into submission and kills them for sport. To instill fear amongst his minions, Scar King has the severed heads of those who dared to defy him on display. Mocking Kong as an abomination, Scar King attacked him with his powerful whip, which appears to be the skeleton of one of his past conquests. Thus, begins a death match between Kong and his evil counterpart, with the apes looking on in horror and a bunch of others sounding the war cry. After slashing Kong's arm with a mysterious crystal at the end of his whip, Scar King resorts to releasing his ultimate weapon, the Ice Titan Shimo whose icy blasts destroyed Kong's arm in frostbite. Kong was only able to save his life when Suko pointed at a secret tunnel out of the lair, which blocked out Shimo's freezing breath. At the beginning of the movie, we saw Gia getting strange visions and sketching pyramids in a state of trance. Remember Gia? She is the last surviving member of the Iwi tribe from Skull Island, whose civilization was wiped out in a storm. Gia lives with her adoptive mother, Dr. Eileen Andrews of Monarch, who now heads the Kong department. Surprisingly, Gia's sketches mirror the signals that Monarch has been receiving from Hollow Earth, but was not being able to track because of unexplained interference. Eileen reaches out to the Titan enthusiast Bernie, who hosts the Titan Truth podcast, and was quite instrumental in the battle against Mecha Godzilla in the last MonsterVerse movie. Bernie theorizes that each spike on the signal coincides with a significant event in Titan history, as the signal keeps interfering with Monarch's Hollow Earth equipment and appearing in Gia's visions, Eileen believes it to be a distress call, a psychic SOS, and a call for help. At this time, Kong pays a surprise visit to the surface because he's in pain from an infected tooth, and we're introduced to Dan Stevens, aka Trapper, the strangest vet in the world who gives Kong a fancy tooth replacement. To decipher the source of the distress call, Eileen, Gia, Trapper, and Bernie board the Hollow Earth aerial vehicles, or HEBs and make a motion sickness inducing trip to the world under. There they witness a gory scene. Monarch outposts have been destroyed with zero survivors, but they retrieve a camera which reveals it to be the doing of a giant ape-like monster, with all indications pointing towards Scar King. As signature, this monster has left a bloody mark of its humongous hands on the surrounding mountains. Tracking the distress call, Eileen and her team arrive at the ruins of a temple which predates even the oldest of civilizations. Adorned with Mothra's murals, the temple is an Iwi shrine which serves as a secret gateway to a surviving tribe of Iwi people who sent out the distress call through pink and blue glowing crystals. The Iwis are discovered to be quite advanced with their science and have managed to survive in Hollow Earth by manipulating gravity through the crystal-based technology. They immediately accept Gia as one of their own and take the explorers to a secret chamber adorned with depictions of the ancient Titan War. Finally, MonsterVerse sheds light on the much-referenced battle that pitted the Kongs against Godzilla, which almost killed the G-Man and forced the Kongs to migrate to Hollow Earth. Reading the pictures, Eileen Andrews narrates a scary but engaging history of the Titans, when Godzilla was the guardian of nature and the great apes were the protectors of humanity till the bloodthirsty, power-hungry, self-proclaimed monster king ruined this peaceful understanding by controlling Kong's kind with a brainwashing crystal placed atop his skeletal whip. It is Scar King who started the Titan War eons ago, in the hopes of becoming the King of Monsters, but Godzilla fought this formidable opponent and delivered a befitting fate to him and his army by trapping them in the bottomless darkness of Hollow Earth. Since then, Scar King has been attempting to break out of this Hollow Earth confinement and fulfill his dream of conquering the surface world. Continuing the lore, Eileen Andrews says, Deep within the Hollow Earth, Scar King discovered a forbidding force in the form of the ancient Titan Shimo. The ruthless Scar King began controlling Shimo by inflicting pain with his crystal whip. Though MonsterVerse hasn't explained Shimo's origins yet, she is believed to be the first Titan ever and one that releases a frosty breath, which trumps even the might of Godzilla's atomic blast. It is said that Shimo caused the first ever Ice Age, which is only a testament to the wreckage that Scar King can cause with Shimo as his pet. We have to understand here that the first Titan battle, it was only Scar King versus Godzilla, but if a war were to break out now, Scar King has a plus one in the form of Shimo, which is bad news for the G-Man. The Iwis prophesize that only a true Iwi from Skull Island has the power to awaken Godzilla's most trusted ally, the benevolent and mystical Mothra, and the camera zooms on Gia. Mothra has established the key to protecting Hollow Earth and its pathways to the surface. In MonsterVerse, we met Mothra for the first time and last time in King of the Monsters when her then-incarnation sacrificed herself to empower Godzilla with her mystical powers. 
but Mothra is kind of immortal in the sense that her life cycle carries on through a sexually laid eggs, and each new incarnation inherits the memories of the ancestors. The Iwi sent out a call for help, sensing Scar King's growing power within Hollow Earth and anticipating a titan war, which will require the joint efforts of Godzilla and Kong, a deal that can only be brokered by Mothra. Meanwhile, after escaping Scar King's hideout, Kong tracked the Iwi signal into their territory and communicated to Gia that he has probably lost his new home to Scar King. Gravely wounded from fighting Scar King and enduring Shimo's icy blasts, Kong crashed onto the ground with his right arm completely incapacitated. Trapper, who is the Dr. Doolittle of Monsterverse, introduced Kong to the Beast Glove, an armored gauntlet that has been in the making in Monarch facilities and luckily was kept in the Hollow Earth outpost. The gauntlet not only powered up Kong's punchy powers but also helped heal the Frostbite with injections. Gaining renewed confidence with his Transformers-like arm, Kong emerged in Cairo to call upon his frenemy, the G-Man. But Godzilla, without the background of the Scar King threat, saw it as Kong challenging him and deep-dived from a cliff on Gibraltar for a shortcut to Cairo. Kong and Godzilla exchanged tail swipes and punches, with Kong almost getting roasted, till a mystical, blinding force blasted Godzilla away. You've guessed it right, Mothra's in the house, people. When the Godzilla and Kong were fighting in Cairo, Gia successfully summoned the Moth Kaiju who has now arrived to fulfill her role as the Peacemaker. Mothra has done this before in 1964's Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. She interrupted the battle between Godzilla and Rodan by firing streams of silk and convinced the two to save humanity. Back to Godzilla x Kong in a beautiful scene, Godzilla locks eyes with Gia, with Mothra asking him to stand down and team up with Kong to tackle his old foe, Scar King, who has by now infiltrated the Iwi territory in Hollow Earth. To prevent Scar King from escaping onto the surface through the Hollow Earth portal, the Iwis create a zero-gravity atmosphere with their crystal science. By joining two pyramids, one in the sky and one on the ground, Meanwhile, Kong hops onto Godzilla's back while Scar King rides on Shimo in a crowd-pleasing scene as the quartet charges into a zero-gravity battle inside Hollow Earth. Blows were dealt, icy blasts were fired, atomic breaths were released, and whips were lashed in an epic Hollow Earth showdown, with Mothra additionally firing her web attacks to protect the portals. When the Iwis exhausted their zero-gravity mechanism, Scar King managed to escape through the portal with Shimo and emerged on the shores of Brazil's Rio de Janeiro. This is the first time Scar King's true scale was revealed in comparison to humans who appeared like mere ants in his shadow. Waving the crystal as a wand, Scar King forced Shimo to release a powerful icy blast that seemingly caused Earth's biosphere to freeze, casting a dark shadow. Meanwhile, Godzilla and Kong chased down Scar King through the portal and landed up in Brazil, with Kong sadly losing his mighty axe on the way. But he has his freshly upgraded beastly arm with which he punched through half a building that Scar King attacked him with. Another punch knocked out a tooth from Scar King's mouth, prompting the evil villain to wave his crystal whip again and cause Shimo to gurgle out another icy blast at Kong. While Kong got his mecha arm frozen, Godzilla also got shrouded in an icy entrapment. However, Shimo's attacks appear to have little effect on Godzilla, presumably because Tiamat's powers enabled him to endure Shimo's deadly blasts, except that one time in Hollow Earth when Shimo froze Godzilla and he had to be rescued by Mothra. Resorting to more primal techniques like a deadly bite, Godzilla snatches the whip away from Scar King with a crystal getting detached from the whip in the process. Can you guess who arrived to save the day at this point? It's Mini Kong Suko, who also jumped through the Hollow Earth portal and managed to fetch along Kong's axe on the way. To Scar King's horror, Suko lifted up the axe and delivered the ultimate blow to Scar King's plans. Suko smashed the detached crystal into pieces, which means Shimo is now free from the baddie's influence, and that does not look good for Scar King. Kong and Godzilla subsequently tossed around Scar King, like a table tennis ball. Shimo is now freed from Scar King's influence and having realized who the real villain is, blasted her icy breath at the devilish Scar King, freezing him solid, and Kong scored his final win against this ancient threat by smashing the frozen Scar King onto the ground, shattering him into shards. Godzilla, now in his terrifyingly burning form, released an atomic breath into the sky that dispersed the ice clouds and welcomed in Mothra through a bright stream of sunlight, with all four of the Guardian monsters having a celebratory party of their own. The film wrapped up on a hopeful note with Kong and Shimo becoming besties, as Shimo is actually revealed to be a peaceful, adorable titan. 
who loves getting under the chin scratches from Kong. In a powerful scene, Kong arrives at Scar King's Hollow Earth lair with Shimo and Suko and establishes himself as the new leader of the Kongs, one who is just and benevolent, not torturous and ruthless like their previous tyrant. It's a dream come true for Kong fans to finally see him getting a family of his own kind in his own home thus establishing a new empire for himself. Meanwhile, Godzilla found a new address as he retreated back to Rome and curled up inside his new favorite den, the Colosseum, a scene that can only be described as awe. Back at the Iwi settlement, Dr. Eileen Andrews is sad that Gia would want to stay back with her newfound tribe members, but Gia decides to stick with her mom for more such world-saving adventures together. The hilarious duo of in-house DJ come vet trapper and monster head Bernie also becomes friends for life, having survived a monster battle together. Mothra also returns to the Iwis and seals off their secret gateway, hiding the settlement from the rest of Hollow Earth. Having fulfilled her duties, she then flies off into the forests within the Iwi realm, watching over all sentient beings and preparing to return in the wake of another world-destroying threat. Future of the Franchise while we're happy with a mushy ending, we're also a tad bit sad that Godzilla x Kong The New Empire deviated from franchise tradition of a post credit scene stuffed with easter eggs and hinting at future developments. However, there will be of course be more MonsterVerse movies, considering that there are so many unexplored Toho monsters to choose from. The likes of Destroya, Biollante, Space Godzilla, and Anguirus are ambitious options, but fans would love to see their MonsterVerse incarnations. Given that Godzilla and Kong have spawned a wildly successful franchise, it is doubtful that any of the other monsters will get a standalone film of their own. Without either Kong or Godzilla playing a part, and with Godzilla and Kong teaming up in two films already, it is unlikely that the frenemies would join forces again, and if so, maybe Godzilla can ask Kong for help next time. If we're to brainstorm ideas and read between the lines, MonsterVerse can very well delve into a detailed film on Kong's adopted junior Suko. Also, GXK leaves behind a bunch of unanswered questions like how did Mothra get to Hollow Earth as the parent Mothra laid her eggs somewhere in the Yunnan rainforest in the 2019 movie. Also, we're curious about why Godzilla suddenly decided to take a nap on the surface given that he loves the ocean depths. Is there a hidden threat lurking underwater that Godzilla needs to stay away from and gear up for? A movie on Mothra's future adventures is also an exciting possibility as she has returned time and again to save the world, but never received a full film treatment in MonsterVerse as of yet. Most importantly, there should be more of Shibo in MonsterVerse. In Godzilla x Kong, this ancient titan remained in pain the whole time and was forced to attack other titans against her will. It will be interesting to witness Shimo in her natural temperament going on future adventures with Kong and Godzilla. In a recent interview, GXK director Adam Wingard, who helmed the last two Godzilla-Kong collab movies, hinted at another sequel, saying a lot more can be explored in the Godzilla and Kong lore. When asked about a trilogy, Wingard said the whole idea that if you've done two movies like maybe you should just go ahead and do a third, because as you've said, there's a trilogy in there. I definitely think there's more story to this, and I think that I have more stories to tell. But it just depends on how GXK does and how things kind of shape out. That's not Kong. Marvelous Verdict To sum it up, Godzilla x Kong is a new empire risen from the ashes of fire and ice. In this new empire, the science gets a little too nerdy, the lore gets a little too deep, and the villains get a bit too villainy with not one or two but multiple epic monster showdowns. We not only get Kong and Godzilla, but also Shimo, Sila, Tiamat, Mothra, and Scar King and all fighting to come out on top, which makes the movie a visual treat. If you liked our video, stay tuned for our detailed coverage in this latest MonsterVerse entry, as well as the wide range of Titan explorations. Till then, keep calm and thank the universe that Godzilla and Kong just save us from another Ice Age. As always, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.